Okay, so in this video we are going to be talking about an introduction to regression. Regression is commonly used in business, so I wish we had more time to cover the content. Uh, but this is a brief introduction of the ideas of regression. Um, regression is really about finding the relationship between two or more variables. So we've learned about correlation that shows the strength and the direction of the relationship between two variables. Regression builds off of this, uh, but it gives us more information. In fact, it estimates a regression equation, which is used to predict uh, the dependent variable, which is the outcome variable, from the independent variable, which is the predictor variable. Um, if there is one predictor, uh, which is called the independent variable, then the regression is a simple regression. If there are at least two independent variables, then the regression is a multiple regression. So in this chapter, we're only talking about a simple regression. Uh, like I said, if we take my business analytics course, we are going to cover uh, regression in greater detail. We'll talk about multiple regression. We'll also talk about um, linear and nonlinear relationships. So in this chapter, we're only talking about uh, linear relationships between two variables, uh, but we can also test nonlinear relationships. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple um diagrams and displays in, in a minute to show you the difference between these two. So let's talk about an example. Let's say that we want to look at the relationship between student population size and quarterly sales for uh, Armand's uh, pizza parlors. So here's a bunch of uh, restaurants. We have 10 restaurants and we have the student population size for nearby campuses. Um, it's in thousands. So this two means that there are 2,000 students in the population um, and population meaning the size of the, the campus. And then we have quarterly sales, which also is, a, also is in thousands of do dollars. So this would be $58,000. So we can test to see if pizza sales are related to the size of the student, student population. That is, we would expect that restaurants near campuses uh, with a larger student population would have larger, higher sales. Um, so again, this shows the strength and the direction of the relationship, which is correlation. But again, with regression, we can right? Uh, create a, an equation, a regression line, which we can use to make predictions. So that's the benefit of regression, right? We create an equation which we can use for prediction, which is extremely important in business, right? So think about this. What if we were thinking like, hey, we want to open up another pizza parlor. Um, what if there's a nearby campus with 17,000 students? What might we expect for quarterly sales? Well, we can take this data, estimate a regression line and then plug in different values such as 17,000 to predict sales. So then ahead of time we'd know, okay, well if we have a campus nearby with 17,000 students, what could we expect for sales? Because you'd want to know that before you start building your uh, pizza parlor. Um, because if you know ahead of time the quarterly sales aren't going to be that great, then you might decide not to build. Um, so this is what's called a scatter diagram, which is a visual display showing the relationship between X and Y. So X is your independent variable, it goes on the X axis. So we have the student population. Uh, y goes on the Y axis, it's the Y variable or the dependent variable, the variable being predicted. Right? So we'd assume that student population predicts quarterly sales. Uh, so how this works is each dot represents an observation. So if we go back to our data, right, we have student population of 2,000 and quarterly sales of 58,000. So if we look at this dot right here, student population 2,000 and then quarterly sales is 58,000, that's, that's a dot. So all these dots represent the observation given in the prior table. So what we do in regression is we estimate this line. This line is the line that best fits this data. So how we do that is we use the equation for line. So hopefully you've seen this before, probably at least in high school. Uh, the equation for any line is y equals b plus mx. So we have y and x, those are our variables, but b and m can get estimated from the data. b is the y-intercept or the point at which your, your line crosses the y-intercept. And then m is equal to the slope, which is equal to the rise of the run, rise over the run. It tells you how steep your line is. So your line could intercept here, but it could go all the way up here. It could be a lot steeper, or it could even be, you know, negatively related. Um, 
So we can basically estimate our parameters, B and M, I'll talk about that more later, um, to be able to plug in values for B, M, and then X, such as 17,000 in our last example, to predict Y, quarterly sales. Um, these are just examples of possible regression lines. So this is like one we just saw. There was a positive relationship as X increases, so does Y. This is a negative uh, linear relationship. So as X is increasing, Y is decreasing. And then this panel shows no relationship. So as X changes, whether it's increasing or decreasing, Y does not change. So these variables are independent. They are not related. Um, regression terminology, I've been using it, but if you get confused, come back to this slide. Your dependent variable is y. It's the variable being predicted. It's also called the outcome variable. Your independent variable x is a variable being used to predict the dependent variable. We can use the size of the uh, student population, which is x, to predict sales, which is y. So the independent variable x predicts the dependent variable or the outcome variable y. Um, Importantly, regression does not establish a cause and effect relationship. We do not say that X causes Y. This is because the data are observational and therefore we cannot control for extraneous or confounding variables that may truly be causing a change in Y. So what does that mean? Let's go back to our example. So we uh, can't really say with 100% certainty that the student population, the size of the student population causes um, an increase in quarterly sales. Right? It makes sense intuitively that, hey, if there's more people, there's more students, your sales are going to go up. But this relationship that we find that we found might be related to um, some other variable driving it. Um, so, for example, maybe these uh, schools that have larger student populations are also in cities with um, with more people. So maybe it's just not the student population per se, but it's the fact that those um, schools are in large cities and in large cities there's just more people um, that um, is what's really driving sales. So not the, the best example, but I'm basically trying to show how there's other variables that might be driving quarterly sales. Um, it might be the selection of other nearby restaurants where there's not a lot else to choose from. Um, it could be anything. So just please just be careful with saying that, oh, X is causing Y. Well, they're associated, they're related. We can try to use X on the in the equation to predict Y. But we can't necessarily say that one is causing the other. Um, th there's a really in-depth literature about X causing Y and, you know, what conditions you need before you can say this. But for most purposes of the data that we have and what we're doing, we really can't uh, say that X causes Y. So just, just at least be aware of that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, right, is our, our data, whether it's linearly related, um, whether we have a linear or nonlinear relationship. So... Let's assume that this is uh, the data for the pizza parlor. It's the, the dark line. You can clearly see that this is a nonlinear relationship. So the dashed line is a line that was used to best fit this data. Um, so you'll notice this line does not fit this data well at all. And that's a problem because what we do remember was we use this predicted line right, to make predictions. So let's say, for example, that we want to know um, and predict uh, sales if the student population is 5,000. So here, 5,000, right, we would use uh, our predicted line, which is up here, around 40,000. So we would say that, hey, if you're going to open a restaurant and the nearby student population is 5,000 students, you can expect sales around $40,000 um, per quarter. Well, that's a huge problem because we would be severely overestimating the value. In fact, it would be down here somewhere below $20,000. So the reason why you need to make sure your, your line, the line that you choose best fits the data is because if you don't, your predictions are not going to be right. And that's a problem in business, right? If you don't have accurate predictions, you could end up in trouble. Um, so a couple things. One, always plot your data. Look to see what they look like. You can clearly say, see that this is a nonlinear relationship, so you shouldn't be using a linear regression. Um, so what would you use? Well, this is actually an exponential. This would be, that'd be fat, uh, best fit with an exponential line. line. Um, but uh, we're not going to talk about this in, in this course. Like I said, in my upper-level business analytics course, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, but I want you to be uh, aware of it. Um, so in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, more about the equation of the line.